Hello fellow e-learning builders. My name is Roman Villarreal and today I'm going to show you a little tutorial on how to make a choose your own adventure game in Captivate. Uh, one of the problems I find is a lot of clients want this gamification stuff. It's become a bit of a buzzword and you know what does it really mean? Does it mean putting a, a crossword puzzle in your e-learning tutorial? Does it mean making some kind of Galaga game that you shoot the letters with? And, and maybe, but the problem is most of those games don't really work very well. The Captivate uh, crossword puzzle is not a great feature in Captivate and making your own kind of Galaga game would require flash skills or, or a, a totally different program. And so what I'm going to talk to you about today is how to make something that's engaging such as a choose your own adventure game like you would have in a choose your own adventure book. Okay, so I have built a little example here for us to take a look at. And uh, let's go ahead and run through it. So I've already exported this, published this. So let's take a look at this really quickly. And keep in mind, I got these cheesy animations in there. Okay, they're in there. They're fun. Uh, these in images are all from the internet, of course. Uh, but uh, I got a choice here. Okay, I can either slay the dragon or save the princess, but I have to slay the dragon first. So I basically am going to be using a branching uh, demonstration here. And so I got some text and I've created some some styles and, and kind of a, a, a simple template to work with uh, using my master pages. Now here I can branch off. I'm going to give them an option to go uh, bring a stranger along with me on my, on my adventure or I can click to continue here alone. So I've already created a choice for them, basically a choice in which can lead to their doom. In fact, they bring the stranger and maybe the stranger uh, kills them along the way. And so, or maybe they get to enter the cave, okay? Uh, in this case, they get to enter the cave. They made a decent choice, okay? Now, they have a choice of making a weapon uh, uh, choice here, okay? They can either choose the Enchanted Arrow or the Hellfire Sword and Shield. So I made this uh, very much a game. I mean, in real life, if this were to be a tutorial, it could be, you know, just whatever content you needed to put in here. But make it fun. You know, I have these little animations in here. It's easy to do in Captivate now. And uh, like I said, it's fun. So if I choose the Enchanted Arrow, okay, I added some audio there. <laughs> uh, you can see how that's a really nice looking graphic. That's an SVG graphic, which is a newer feature in Captivate. Uh, but now I give them a choice to restart their journey. So if I click that, they're back at the beginning. Okay, and they can continue down this path, uh, continuing on their journey. They should have chosen the Hellfire Sword and Shield, okay, and they slay the dragon. Okay, when they continue on their journey, it takes them back to this home uh, slide in which now we have a button here allowing them to save the princess. So if they click on save the princess, it takes them down this other path. I got a little video in here, which I won't play. It's just a, a video of a cheesy 80s movie called Dragon Slayer, or maybe you love it. Um, it, was, it was a pretty good movie, actually. Anyways. Uh, again, I've added another branching feature, okay? And branching can get really tricky in Captivate if you're not using the branching view, and I'll show you that in just a second. But if I choose a treasure, I die again, okay? I happen to know that I'm going to save you the, the effort there. Uh, but I'm going to choose to get the princess. You live happily ever after. There's an award. Uh, and then you take them, of course, wherever you want. In my case, it's just a hyperlink to a website, okay? Now, if I go back into Captivate, uh, let's see a little bit how I did this. So I have two buttons here to begin with, okay? And I used some advanced actions to kind of hide a button uh, and then show a button. But basically, make sure you have titles on all of your slides. It makes a big mess when you're trying to link your button. So for example, if I have my Slay the Dragon button uh, and I go over to my properties for this button, make sure your actions, you know, will go to a slide, jump to a slide that has a decent name in here. Okay, it makes it a lot simpler. Uh, for example, over here where I go to bring the stranger, I could make that uh, that he dies, okay? Um, that's a bad, bad one. I remember being really sad in my Choose Your Own Adventure books when I would make the wrong choice and die. In fact, it wasn't so much sad. It was almost like kind of weird and scary. Anyway, so this is our weird and scary game. I can just choose my slide dead, and that's going to get me to my slide two, which, of course, is death. Otherwise, if I continue alone, this is going to jump to number four, okay? And so I have quite a bit of uh, branching going on here. I can go to the window and see my branching view. And from this view, 
I get a bird's eye view down here of my whole branching, okay? But you can see that I have two different choices uh, in which I can go. Of course, this choice over here to save the princess is hidden, uh, and I'll show you that here in just a second. But you can also select these slides and double click on them to make them larger. From here, you can click on each of these buttons and you can actually add the actions to the buttons right within this branching view. It's pretty slick. I do recommend spending a little bit of time in here, especially if you have advanced, more advanced than this. It can get extremely confusing if you're just using this, this uh, film strip view to control your button actions. Another great useful feature of this branching view is they have this button here which lets you export a PNG file. So it makes it really fast to maybe share this uh, diagram with your team. Okay, I'm going to close this off and I want to show you one more thing in here. My main purpose of showing you a choose your own adventure game is it's just to try to mix things up a bit. You know, what kind of game can you possibly build and captivate? I think these are pretty cool. And to tell you the truth, this was a lot of fun to make as well. Okay, so maybe you can have some kind of HR training based off a of choose your own adventure. And, and maybe it's not death, but maybe it's some other uh, <laughs> punishment if they choose the wrong thing. And a prize if they choose the right thing. So moving right along here. Now, the biggest change that can happen in my adventure is if the dragon is slayed. Okay, so on this slide, what I did is I have an action here. Okay, and I've assigned a variable called dead dragon with a Boolean value of one. So it's if he's if it's if he gets to this slide, basically I get a one. Okay. Um, now, when you're creating these variables, one of the ways you can do it is you can come up here to project and go to variables, and you have these pre-built variables in here. In this case, I had to make one, so I just went ahead and chose add new, and I call it you know dead. Uh, dragon, no spaces, okay, and uh, and then you assign a value. Now in this case, I just assigned my value of zero, okay, and I saved it, and it was a variable that's now available to me. But when he gets to this point, the dead dragon is assigned with a number one, okay, so that changes the variable, and where I'm catching this variable is actually on this first slide, okay? So if I click on Save the Princess, one more thing we have to do is we have to hide this button so it's not available, okay? And the way you do that is just by pushing on the eyeball here, okay? And this will basically make the button invisible when you preview it, okay? Uh, it'll remain visible in here because that would be really hard to work with an invisible button in this authoring mode. Okay, this button here doesn't have that invisibility state. It's it's currently visible. Okay, the other thing I need to do is I need to create an advanced action. I created one called button switcher. The way I can do that is just come up here to advanced actions, and from this point I can choose conditional actions like if something happens, then make something else happen. Okay, and in this case I happen to have one that I made called button switcher. Okay, so I made a new action up here and I gave it a name and I assigned it with these values. So basically I called in my dead dragon variable and I said if this dead dragon is equal to one which happens when the dragon is slayed okay then I'm gonna hide the dragon button which is this button here I happen to call this button dragon button and I'll show you that in a second and I show the princess button which is the other button and it's as simple as that it's just a matter of hiding one button or the other okay so the reason why this is called dragon button and this one's called princess button is because I went ahead and selected this button I called it princess button and this button I called it dragon button because you know as you might know this but when you create a new button uh, like I just did here it's given a generic name button underscore 12 okay these names can't have any spaces in them but uh, nonetheless so I went ahead and renamed them and that way when you're making your advanced actions it makes it much easier to identify your buttons just like I did with my my slides okay I gave them a good name uh, so that I could easily identify them. so next time you're building an e-learning project consider making a choose your own adventure game again it's a lot of fun to make and I think your users really enjoy it I hope you enjoy this tut that's all for now thank you